Hey, what's up guys? It's Fry, and I'm going to take you through another video devlog. Um, I don't really have specifically what I'm going to do today planned per se, um, but that's part of the fun of a devlog is that you just get to kind of poke around with me, which is pretty much what I do every time I sit down to work on my game. I just kind of start at the beginning and go, okay, like where did I, how far did I get last time? So um, I've been messing with this level selector, um, and uh, what I can say is it's been a bit of a chore because I had originally set my game to kind of run linearly. So it was like I have, again, let's see up here, I have one gameplay scene, which is basically my board. And um, when they complete the level, um, it'll play, the, it'll load the next level. If they fail, it'll load the same level they played last time. Um, but when I add in the level selector, um, what ends up happening is um, they get to choose the level they want to play, and it may be one that they've unlocked earlier, right? So if they want to replay level 29 when they're at level 35, they're welcome to do so. But the problem is, is that all of my code was looking for like um, the level reached, um, uh, you know, the, the level, like the, the idea of the level they reached and incrementing it basically. Um, so I, I can't do it based on level reach. I have to do it based on level selected. And then I can just, when they, if it was like, if I did set up something where it could autoplay to the next level without having to come back to the level selector, which is probably going to happen in some cases, um, I do have the auto built in there as well. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like, but I am kind of back at a point now where I can um, work on the level selector. So um, there's two things actually that need to happen, um, but we'll take a look at the level selector anyway. And... Oh, it's viewport. Sorry. Okay, so here are my level buttons, and they have text on them that matches the level, and they have stars. One, two, three, and uh, the button um, is uh, doing this level select menu select, and then I'm enter. I've manually entered zero zero one, and then this button zero zero two, and it updated the text. So. These have just been manually generated, and there is on the content, I believe, no, it actually may be, oh, content, sorry, okay, so I've got a grid layout here, so I can duplicate this all day long, and then update the new ones as I see fit, so 005 for the uh, code part. And on the text, I want to update this to 005, etc. Right? So, um, whoops, don't want a character turn in there though. There we go. Um, so, set I can set it up manually. And you know what? At the end of the day, if it comes down to that's how I have to do it, I will set up every asteroid individually <laughs> with like 100 levels because really it won't take that long. But ideally, I want to set this up to be dynamic. So, um, that is one part of the thing that's going to happen next. So, what I would do is uh, let's go down into my let's prefab scriptable objects. So, for every level, I have a scriptable object that has a bunch of the board parameters and collection goal information, um, which to you is pretty meaningless at this point, but um, basically this is how it sets up the board when I launch. So for, uh, for every level I have one, and then in, and I've called this series, but um, the series script of a logic is actually a mission. Um, so a series is an asteroid, I'm going to name kind of each world after like a giant asteroids in the asteroid belt. So I'm envisioning launching with three of them and maybe however levels I can reasonably fit, um, you know, that make it interesting enough. I'm going to say, let's say 50 or 100 each. Right, I can get through <laughs> designing them all, but um, so series basically has a list of all the levels that apply. So right now I only have three levels and one mission, but um, you know this list can grow pretty big. Now, since I have a list of all the levels um, and ultimately their name, which is you know the name of the actual um, object itself, um, I can, in theory, create a loop that goes through all the levels here and creates a button for them as a prefab. I know that I can do that. And then if it automatically assigns them to the content game object, 
which has my grid layout group, they should automatically display in the order of my grid layout group. So that's fine. I think I can do that. Um, the problem is, well, it's not even a problem, the, the thing I'm missing is that when um, the player completes the game, I like to save. Well, I am going to save their score, although I'm not, I don't think I'm going to display it in this interface. Um, but I will save a star rating based on their, you know, how they did their collection goals. So um, it may be one, two, or three stars. It's not going to be an exact science. Just if you let up the star, you get it, right? So um, that information I actually don't have anywhere. So the dilemma I have right now is that I'm saving. Let's see if I can find my JSON saver in here somewhere. JSON saver. Okay, so this is basically a JSON save file that saves things um, into my JSON file, whatever you want to call it. Saves it on the desktop somewhere. There is a folder here, this thing here, application persistent path. So it doesn't matter if it's a PC game, an Android game, or an iOS game. In theory, this application persistent path will put in like a user data folder um, that can be saved on whatever device they're using. So um, I'm building this game for Android. I'm pretty sure it's going to work okay. Um, but um, it does definitely work um, when you're running it locally. Um, but the problem is, is that also part of this is that we're encrypting the data. So um, I actually can't open the file and look at it. <laughs> so whatever I save in there, I kind of have to do like little hacks in my code, like this one right here. I just kind of reset everything back to level one um, while I'm testing just by accessing, like overwriting it in the data manager. Um, but okay, so I was saying for each of these levels, right? I want to be able to save what level they've completed, right? Um, if the level is locked or unlocked, the score that the player received on the level and their star rating for display. And I'm thinking about that and I feel like their score and their star rating are really player information. However, the lock unlock is really a level specific item. So I feel like maybe, and maybe just we'll do it for the unlock lock. Um, maybe we'll do that first because it might be a little simpler to look at. So I'm just going to close all these for now. Uh, do, 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 and I want to go back to my, now here I want to go, I actually want to change the script that created them because I don't think I need to recreate them after this. I'm pretty sure not. So I'm going to go to level. And this is my scriptable object script. So uh, as you can see, it's a level and it's based off scriptable object. And uh, here are all the parameters that are built for the setup. And I want to add one to indicate if the level has been unlocked or not. So I'm not entirely sure this is the best place to do it, but I'm going to try here anyway. So public, uh, I guess it would be a Boolean level unlocked. Again, level unlocked. And doesn't look like, oh yeah, we do. Was false. So now I've set this to false. So in theory, if I go back into my, back in here, we'll let the script update. I go into my guys here. Look, they've got a level unlocked. So I'm wondering if I should I should probably call it level locked, not level unlocked, because I'm probably gonna default it then I can default to true. And I just feel like it would be it's locked is this default state. So yeah, level locked makes it makes more sense. I'm actually gonna change that. I'm gonna change it to level locked. I'm actually gonna make this default state true. Save that again.
So now I've done a lot of retrieving information from here and I feel like I haven't actually saved information in the scriptable object. So that might be something I have to come back to also. Um, so level locked equals true. Level locked equals true. Level locked equals true. I'm going to go to one and unlock one because that should be the way it is, right? And I'm going to go ahead and delete all these extra buttons. And if I'm right, level button is a prefab because it is blue, so I've already made it a prefab, which is good. Alright, and I'm going to go to my level select menu. Level select menu, not my level selector. Okay, so this is basically the script that um, updates the uh, level select menu. Um, this is actually UI stuff, so this should probably come out of load data, but we'll leave it there for now. And really, nothing happens here. So, I can figure if they select a level, it configures a level. There we go. But I actually want to add in something that's going to load the level. So, I guess we'll call it private. Private void load levels and it doesn't have to ha take anything right now. Um, now I do have access to missions here. So I'm actually going to go take a look at something in another script that I've done before. My level selector. Okay, so this stuff here. So current mission. So this is basically saying like if there's a mission in the level selector, which there will be. Um, oh wait, configure mission. And then we kind of loop through each level and then do something with it. So I'm just gonna steal. I know copying, pasting code is bad. As long as you're paying attention, it's fine. As long as you know what you're doing. <laughs> I don't, but we'll pretend I do for now. Okay, so I'm going to say if the current mission, and obviously it's not going to know what current mission is. So, uh, and current mission is actually in the level selector class. So, I'm going to have to say... is protected even though I don't fully know what protected means I do I do I do know what it means but you know someone does it that way for a lot I'm just doing it okay so mission oh we already know mission name text mission description uh, description we're not using so it's uh, protected the thing that I want to protect is I'm running in a variable sorry I've lost oh current mission that's right. So I want to say protected uh, mission, current mission equals, and my level selector is a singleton. So I'm going to say level selector dot instance dot uh, Current mission? Is that what it is? I think it is actually current mission. Okay, so as long as my level selector, oh no, oh, there we go. Uh, da, 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 do I need to do I need underscores? It's protected, so it should be an underscore. Assuming that protected and private are kind of the same. And we'll just update this stuff here. Okay. Load level. Uh, so we actually don't need to match anything. We just need to create, instantiate our buttons, right? So, oh, current mission, why don't they like you? Current mission. Ah, that's why. There we go. 
missing the T. Okay. Fun times when you're dev logging. You get to make lots of mistakes. Okay, so saying if the current mission from the level selector isn't null, then set assign it. Then get a list of the levels from the mission config, which is what we just defined here dot levels. For each level and mission levels, we're going to do something in that increment. So I actually want to instantiate something, but I need the thing to instantiate. So actually, let's put in some pseudocode here. And we'll say I want to inst instantiate, instantiate B. I just got play button. No. Level button. Um, and then I want to update its uh, text with um, the level name. And I want to update its uh, lock. Unlocked status. And I do also want to update its stars, even though we didn't put that in there. I'm just going to put it in the pseudocode here because I feel like I might go to the my player preferences save file to save their scores as opposed to on indiv each individual level. Since they are specific to the player, um, and then maybe in the event if I want multiple players or you know multiple players on the same device so that you can log in with your Google account and then your sister comes along and logs in with her Google account. So I feel like I don't actually want to attach those two values specifically to well I guess lock unlocked would be per individual. You know what? It might be okay. I might have to just ignore multiple people using apps. I'm not even sure that people do that to be honest. I don't let anyone else touch my phone so it's probably not a problem but um my options are either to keep all the information in the scriptable object or to figure out how to kind of create lists that I'm maintaining in the JSON um, save file. So um, I'm not sure exactly how to do that though. So um, that will be something I'm probably not going to do right here. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research. Um, but um, let's take a look now don't instantiate things a lot. I mean, it seems like a pretty simple thing. So instantiate, instantiate, what do I want to instantiate? Do I want one of these guys? An object. So I actually need an object to instantiate. So I'm not sure if I want to say public game object. Uh, and I'm going to call it oops, level level button. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go to level selector. Go back into the Unity. Level select menu is where that script is attached. And oh, did I save it? Oh, wait. I have an error and a fly. Okay, we'll just comment this out for now. Save that. Go back into Unity. Nope. Why is it causing it a wake? Okay. So it didn't like me assigning this right here. And honestly, um, I don't know why I did that anyway, so private. I'm going to do this, I don't know what's going to happen anyway. Private void awake. And uh, current mission equals. And this is giving me an error. I knew that it would. It's inherited, but I think that if I go base awake, should be okay. No, okay, so this is actually probably going to be public. So I got a second here. Uh, so this is from the menu level select menu. Let's read this again. Hides. Okay. 
Make the current member override that implementation at the, the override. So let's make public override void awake. Uh, private. See, I don't know what I'm doing. I just hack away until I figure it out. Virtual. So virtual. Ah, uh, one of these days. Okay, I actually have this myself. <laughs> Unless I deleted it at all. Uh, so this is when you cheat and you just go figure out what you did before. I could be reading that error message again, I suppose. Uh, virtual is not a valid form of this item. The modifier override is not valid. So maybe it's... Okay. Private void a week. And this one. Add, otherwise, add the new character. Okay, so I'm gonna go and edit. Actually, tools. I'm looking for the find. Should be under edit, I think. Ah, there we go. Find and replace. And find in files. And I'm not gonna switch it from. Sorry, I'm in the wrong window here. I'm just gonna switch it from to current project. And awake. Alright. Private load awake. Private load awake. There's one base dot awake. Public override void awake. Okay, let's try that again. Data manager, what's different here? Public override void awake. Let's try that again. Game manager, public override, base that awake. Oh, maybe I need to go in here. Cannot change your app when you're overriding protected inherited member. Okay, so it is protected, so let's go protect. There we go. It was <laughs> it was protected like all of its friends, so I just spent 10 minutes, whatever, wasting your time <laughs> with syntax, but there we go. Okay, so uh, in theory, we should have a thing called a level button now. So I'm going to save this, go back into Unity, find my top level level select menu. And there's my level button. Now, if I go into my prefabs folder, I should somewhere have my new shiny level button. And I am going to, oh, wait, how do I go with that? Come back up here. There we go. And now we can drag this over here. So now I have my level button. Okay. Um, This is, I think, the same error from before, so it should be okay. All right, so I gotta come back down here, and I want to instantiate each uh, level level the level button. And close the original object and return the clone. Perfect. Transform parent. Parent that will be assigned to the new object. So I want them all to come from that content window. So do I actually have to assign it an inspector to do that? might have to. I don't really know how else I would find this particular element. So, um, grid layout, the viewport, this is the part that makes it scrolly. 
so content would be the one. So I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call it content grid, I think. So put in another one here, public game object, content grid, and go back down here. Content grid. What else can we do in here? Bool instantiate world space. Uh, I think. And I want to set its object position relative to its new parent. I'm going to go with false. For now, I probably don't even need it. I might take it out later. Oh, is that not going to like it anyway? Well, fine, be that way. Oh, it doesn't have a content grid. Is. Hold on. Uh, content grid, public game object. And this. Oh, it needs to be a vector 3. Oh. So I actually need this transform? Maybe? And this is for quark. I can't say a quarter nion. Okay, so this should actually be a transform. <sighs> okay, so transform content grid. Oh, I need which is not valid. Okay, well, what do you want me to do here then? Well, you know, I'm going to leave it off for now. So I'm going to say instantiate that to the content grid. I'm going to save it here. And I think I've been prattling for a while, so I think once I check this. It should uh, hopefully generate three buttons on the page. Fingers crossed. Okay, a level select menu. And if not, it'll be a bunch of errors for us to figure out, so that's good too. Okay, and I want this transform. So my con. Yeah, and then uh, this guy here, level button, I'm going to take out for now. Since we don't need an extra button in there. Okay, so scripts. File, save all, close here, cross your fingers and cross your toes that it's going to generate three buttons for me. Don't, oh, you know what, I didn't add the script, I didn't actually call it. <laughs> I added it, I didn't call it, hopefully it's that simple. Um, okay, so back to level select menu, apologies. And so this is load levels, and I want this to happen after you load data. And I'm going to save it. Come on back to Unity. Let it compile, and cross your fingers, cross your toes again. Huzzah! It generated three buns for me, so that's awesome. So um, I'm happy that actually worked. <laughs> And I didn't really have to look up anything when I did it either. Um, so that's cool. So uh, next steps are going to be to like change the text on these and um, figure out if the lock on lock will work. Um, I apologize for not doing it all in one video, but I really I can only talk for half an hour or so before I get tired. Um, but uh, yeah, so yay. I think I can generate the buttons pretty easily from my list. Um, and uh, that's pretty cool. So. Let's look back at my pseudocode. We want to instantiate the level button. Boom. Done. Update its text with my level name. Should be pretty straightforward, I think. Update its locked unlocked status based on the level information. So actually, I can probably... Um, oh, that is a good for each. So I want to do something with the object that I've instantiated it before I move on to the next one. So... It'll all happen in here. Um, update its lock and lock status, and then uh, update the stars. So that'll be what I'm doing next. So cool. Um, thanks for um, watching my dev vlog, um, watching me code a little bit, as hacky as it is. Um, and um, I do have one little favor since you made it this far. Um, I have like 75 followers on YouTube. I know I'm so popular, but um, if I get to 100, I get to actually change the name of my channel to something that isn't a gobbledygook. Um, um, you know, alphanumeric code. So it would be really cool if you liked watching me code 
watching my video if you could like my video and subscribe so that I can get to that 100 followers and uh, hopefully change my name. Anyway, this is Ryan. Give me a uh, tweet on Twitter uh, or um, say hi at GameDevHQ. Um, ciao.